Alright. I wasn't gonna do this, but I talked to him this morning. Oh, yeah. He agreed. But we have a honorable mention. We do. Even though we said our top five, this is technically gonna make it six, but I didn't wanna leave a film out. I didn't wanna leave this one in particular out. Which one is it? And it is going to be Spider-Man No Way Home, baby. <laughs> Spider-Man No Way Home. Again, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but again, nostalgia wins. Oh. Nostalgia wins. No joke. And it, it hit one billion worldwide, right? In a pandemic? It hit the it, billions it like in the, the box third? office. Yeah, wasn't it like the third grossing? Yeah, in, in a pandemic, yeah, which is crazy. This film... It deserves its praise, and this is probably, and I, this isn't a spoiler, but this is Tom Holland's best performance as Spidey. I mean, Homecoming, you see him be a kid. Uh, what was the second one called? Uh, uh, no, no Way Home? No, no, way home. No, no, that's the third one. Uh, <laughs> All three of them got oh, homes oh, and far from home. Far from home. Far from home. <laughs> Number four, Homeless. <laughs> Why would you say that? Anyway, okay, Homecoming, you see him be a kid. Uh, far from home, you get to really see him, like, try to push through it a bit. But No Way Home, you really see him grow up. Man, this was definitely his... I mean, it's his, it's his origin story. This is the Peter Parker, man. This is yes, very... this is... We, this is legit the Peter Parker I've been waiting for. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. the scientist side, the nerd side, the one who does things on his own, yeah. the leader. Independent, you know? the apartment. Yes. Oh, got to do. yes, he's pay not me, pay me rent. You know exactly. He's not in. He's not holding on to somebody's hand in this film. This mm -hmm. is this was different. And some other big things happened that caused my whole theater to jump up, including me. Oh, really? Yes. Damn, yes. You got a way better audience We than Yes, we were all hyped up. We went nuts on the things that, this film was full of so many surprises. But again, nostalgia wins. I even cried multiple times on this film. You, wait, hold on. Oh, oh my, my bad, hold on. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you you did? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I did. That. I cried that. multiple times. Don't listen to me. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it did. He don't cry, but I do. And I have fine. too much of a heart. Um, <laughs> but I did. What did you think of this? Oh, yeah. It's, it's hard to discuss it without talking about I know. I know. Okay, let, let's break down the simple things. Okay. Score. All right. Huh? Score. Score. Michael Giacchino has yes. been doing... And a good job. Yes, now, he has. Of course, you know. But this one hits differently, though. It does. If you haven't seen the film and you listen to the score, don't listen to the score because no. it does spoil. Especially some track nineteen. Yes. <laughs> don't, that's a heavy hitter. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. That one. Don't. Don't do it. Don't do it if you have not. He. This was probably his most impactful score ever. Mm, he's better than the whole trilogy. Yeah, it is. I'm, I don't know if ever, I mean, Mary is Up is pretty good. He's Up soundtrack's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, but I was, that was No, that was right. good. Dang, I forgot about Up. No, you can't forget Up, bro. No, no I did. But, I'm sorry. Uh, dang, you forgot Up? No, I forgot he did it. Uh, <laughs> that, no, that freaking... I would say this is best one in the Spider-Man trilogy. In a bet, and yeah. No, well, I mean, like, yeah, in the trilogy. Yeah, that's true. That is what I was trying to say. I mean, I haven't listened to all his scores he ever done, but... Up still pretty up for me, but let's not talk about anyway, Spider-Man. Yeah, No Way Home. He he took it home. <laughs> <laughs> this fun. was it was a beautiful score. Okay. It was beautiful. This ain't a spoiler, but everybody know Green Goblin was in here. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. know Willem Dafoe. Bruh, dude, he's a bit of a scientist, you know. <laughs> yeah, <but>. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So the story deals with uh, Spidey trying to undo any an announcement that happened at the end of Far From Home, and Doctor he goes to Doctor Strange and trying to have Doctor Strange try to undo it with a spell. But again, when you try to undo something and have a spell, they all have consequences, mm -hmm. and I think that's where the No Way Home title really comes oh, in. Yeah. You're trying to see him take this journey, and undo what that big announcement was, which was him being. Spider-Man, the Spider-Man identity yeah. of who it is. And that does have consequences. And that consequences, you get to see that fleshed out through this entire film. Uh, and I gotta say, I know, I know you were worried about it, but the, the BFX, I know you were worried because they were, you feel like they weren't taking the time, but I, honestly, I was they, scared. They knocked it out of the park, dude. I mean, I was scared. I they did all of this, what, within a year? 
Oh yeah, maybe it was in slightly later. Because they started yeah. filming what I think October of twenty no twenty twenty. I'll say like a few months less than a year. Yes, yes. And but they put everything and they got in this. I'm gonna this is sequence. I'm not gonna say what it is or why it's happening. Yeah. I'm just gonna say Spider Man, Doctor Strange. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Box. Uh, <laughs> they honestly like it's it's some it's some good stuff. Yes. Like, it, yeah. The, the, yeah, the performance, Will on the phone knocked it out of the park. Honestly, yes, he did. They gave him a new look into his character. Yeah, it's, it's just. I'm surprised Willem Dafoe. Well, there's a couple of films by Willem Dafoe that I am surprised he did not get an award from. Lighthouse. Let's just. Like I was just gonna. Why Lighthouse. you? Why you all up in my brain? My bad. That is I, legit. What I was gonna say. On, why did he not get some kind of award or something for that? That's his best performance. That was ever. one of his best performances. And I know superhero movies do not get those kind of awards, They're but he knocked it out. Of, I heard, yeah. but he knocked it out of the park as Green Goblin here. This hits hit differently here. But yeah, and yeah, he hit me in the heart. He definitely took me back to those oh, days with oh, no, Toby. Yeah, yeah good old, good old Toby. Mm -hmm. my, my, that's again, nostalgia. That's yeah, like when see, I grew up with. So. See, nostalgia. I still remember going to like the theater mm -hmm. in Mexico. Yeah. El <laughs> Spider-Man. Yes. And, um, and like, I think it was like a big line, dude. Mm -hmm. I remember like waiting yes. in the line just to, just to go into the actual theater. Not yes. like buying the tickets, just to go into the theater. Yeah. And, like, I still have that memory, man. And, I mean, I love Spider Man too, but these movies is really, ooh, it's really up yeah, there. I mean, it's kind of it, hard. It's to... up there. I, I couldn't leave this out. That's why I said we have to do this one. So, so what's your honorable mention, bro? This is hard, man. I know. I mean, we, we discussed before we roll. We did. Uh, but I'm going to go with The French Dispatch. Dun, dun, dun. By Wes Anderson. Uh, Legend. Oh, he's, he's, I work is. Unique. Yes. This film is unique. Yes. So, uh -uh. let's discuss this movie for a little bit, shall we? I know you, you saw it? I did not. Alright, well, I'll break it I down. I feel bad, man. No, it's fine. I'll break it down. Yeah. It comes out on Blu-ray today, actually. Funny thing. Oh, I don't know where I'm going after we're done shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the thing. Uh, with Anderson, I've always been having a, uh, an interesting style. Very different. Very. Ba very different. I mean, if you see... If you see it was on this film, you know he did it type thing. Yeah, a, a, another director, again, if you watch the cinematography, you have to pay attention. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, every shot is constructed out of, to perfection, pretty much. Yes. To perfection. I mean, everything is layered perfectly in a certain geometry, geometry way that he geometry. loves. Geometry. Geometry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, has a, you know, he has a very distinct style, and he pretty much went all out with it in this movie. And I think Loki though, I mean like Grand Budapest, if you haven't seen that one, please watch it. Grand Budapest is like, I think the peak of like, the he reached with that style. Yeah. And this one, I think he just wanted to push it to the next level. So the French Dispatch follows uh, an American journalists in France and they, they pretty much write stories about the city and the people around it. And it follows three stories, I guess kind of like four in a way. Uh, so it's pretty much a short story film, like each each story has that and then the next story completely different, shot in mm -hmm. black and white and mm -hmm. the next one is has like a mix of mystery and then like a little animation. It, it's, it's, it's a full of fun. He just goes, he just says how much I can push this style and I mean he goes a lot like... Um, so he follows these this stories and the first story is it's about a prisoner who's a painter. This is, in my opinion, the best story of all three. Mm. Uh, it follows him. He falls in love with a with a guard, and he she becomes his muse. And we follow we go through his backstory, how he got a prison, him trying to get out, and making new art. And there's this there's this moment where he they're, they're laying in like in the floor together, and then he's like proposes love to her, and mm -hmm. she's like, Nah, I'm good. He's like, Wait, how how do you know? He's like, Nah, I don't want to. I'm not in love. So then he, he looks at the ceiling and the, this whole shirt film is in black and white and then he sees the ceiling and the ceiling turns to color and it slowly turns into like colors of painting like of the ceiling was a painting and he's just like oh I gotta get back to painting you know I need this and this and this I need to get back into being a painter again and it's just that whole scene is just I don't know just so beautiful almost like how Van Gogh saw the world. Like painters see the world a little different. Yeah, way different. You know, and it's almost like he saw this just a little ceiling, but he 
he made it look so like beautiful and the way he saw it and it's it just it's just the little things that like that make that, that that short story to the next level and again every time there's a painting it's in color mm -hmm. almost like the art is like you have to put it in color and the world around us is so gray and ugly but the paint the art is so beautiful it just it elevates that whole grayness and ugliness. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's in the damn prison, you know? Yeah. Everything's dirty, dirty. But the art... Dirty, dirty. <laughs> glows, you know? Yeah. That's just, that's just a great, great little metaphor there. Uh, and then there's one more thing that stayed with me in that film, and that's it. That's what I'm going to talk about. I know you haven't seen that. I know we haven't had much of a conversation. I know. I, I feel bad that I can't join in. I'm but, like... uh, in the last story, I won't say what happened, but the chef takes a poison. And the journalist guy's like, you know, what you did that? You ate it, although you knew you were it was poison. And the chef is like, this is in France, so the chef is Asian. And he says, I'm a foreigner. I didn't want to disappoint. I didn't want to feel like a disappointment to everybody. Mm -hmm. And here's the interesting thing. Wes Anderson is from Texas, the U.S. That's now, true. He resides in Paris mm. with his wife. He's a foreigner mm -hmm. making a movie about France, mm. a.k.a. I'm a foreigner. I didn't want to disappoint anybody. I feel like this movie is like a love letter to like friends. It's almost like a I love your culture, and uh, that's what I got out of that scene. And uh, I, I don't know. I think maybe that's what the, he was trying to do. Maybe like represent like I love what you do. I'm here. I'm, I know I'm a foreigner. I'm not from here, but like I love your culture, and I want to do it right. I like when directors do that, where they uh, try to make a reflection of their own life and kind of. Oh, yeah. Put it into their own films, which is pretty cool. I actually like that. Art, art reflects your life, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, and that's true. And and that goes back to nobody. Where why, why I like that film so much because Bob Odenkirk's family has actually been messed with before. Oh, so he actually he thought of this idea of taking okay, let's turn this moment that happened in my life into a dope action film. And I think that's what I like about that. He actually just want to try it. So. I, 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 that's what I loved about that film so much too. I heard he really did really good though. I mean, besides like, like, and obviously you, you express your love for it. Yeah. And I have yet to see it and I feel bad for mm -hmm. not seeing that. I'm gonna see it soon, no worries. See, he make me feel bad about seeing some of his. Before this, this video is uploaded, I, I'm, I'm gonna have it on my mind already. Yeah. <laughs> I've already seen it, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like, no, I heard he was like really, cause I, was, I remember when I saw the like, him, he's a comedy guy. Hey, yeah. And I like when people, like I said, Prove me, prove me wrong. Yeah, back he, to my... he blew me away because I'm so used to him doing funny stuff. And yeah, it's like, whoa, it's interesting. Even with Kevin Hart on Fatherhood, it crazy, right? To I see this that. comedian do something serious. He did something serious? Yeah. <laughs> Fatherhood. Go watch it. It's on Netflix. Fatherhood. But it's crazy to see him do, you know, something dark and something serious. So, yeah, Bob Odenkirk blew me away with that. But, yeah, French Dispatch. French Dispatch. <laughs> uh, I got to see that one. Lure is out today. Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna say what day it is. <laughs> but Blue is out. I'm not gonna say what day it so, is. So, you know, either, either you can wait for the Criterion Collection version or you can just get it now. I'm gonna get it now. Cause or I for wait. all you fellow Steelbook collectors watching me, I got you. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know if that's gonna be. I don't think they're doing No, they're not doing Steelbook on that. But custom ones, whatever. <laughs> There's a thing, it's out there. It is, it's a thing. Venture into it, you know, do mm. a little research. Alright, y'all. That was our top five plus honorable mention this was fun this ain't the last time y'all gonna see alejandro here on this channel what's good <laughs> y'all baby. remember him he was on injustice week i'm but also the guy who record your that's true he rec he recorded my room tour that was funny <laughs> he was trying so hard oh, not to laugh the whole time and the statue yeah see yeah he did that shout too. out to the cameraman that knows me yeah shout out to alejandro though the only Mexican I keep around. Uh, I'm just kidding. But yeah, thank y'all so much for watching. Yeah, 2021 was a crazy year for movies. Nostalgia from the indies to movies was on fire in 2021. Oh, I mean, it was. I'm telling you, from the beginning we say it was a great year, and it, it's just interesting how like the 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 year ended with boom 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 boom. Yeah, bang, 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 big here. heavy hitters, big ones. Uh, back and it was hard for me to go see other films because I was excited about other bigger ones, and so it was hard to even give. You know some other indie films a chance because it was hard trying to focus on that you know while these other big ones were coming out <laughs> oh, it's a balance man it's a balance it's really hard yeah at that time you know yeah that's real talk and if you miss it then at least you get blue physical release or that's true but some films that i 
some films I regret missing though, because some films deserve that big screen. Oh yeah. Treatment. That's what uh, I say. Like yeah, I had, I knew I had to see King Kong. It's like Godzilla on IMAX. So it's one of those. Movies. Yeah, that's one of those big ones you can't miss. Same on. with uh, Spider Man, of uh, course. Yeah, that's true. Same with uh, 007. Now Nightmare. Nightmare. I, I hate that I. You missed out on Nightmare Alley? I did. <laughs> oh shoot! Out of theaters now? Is it in theaters now, Mom? I don't know if it's still. I don't know. I'll have to take a look. But <laughs> that's one I don't want to miss. But. Yeah. Find a way. Well, yeah. There, again, it's always like that physical release. So you yeah. can always you can always watch it on your own pace. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, at least like give them a shot. That's what we're saying. Yeah, that's what we're saying. I, I know. Oh, we, we. I know you. You'll have your own uh, top five. Put them in the comments. Yeah, oh, let us know. What was y'all top five films of 2021? We, we'll, we'll like to talk to y'all a little bit. Have a little discussion. Y'all probably won't know his name on YouTube. But. <laughs> you don't even know my name. He be like, it's you, right? Like, yeah, I can't, because I can't pronounce his name. How you say the name? Monsoir Nosferatu. See, I ain't going to remember that. Well, this is recorded, so I can watch it back. But anyway, <laughs> thanks, bro. Shout out again to Alahan, bro. <laughs> yeah. And did, I, did I hurt you? <laughs> that was an effect, man. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, shout out to Alahan, bro. Oh, uh, next year we're gonna make this what we agreed to top ten. Next year? Yeah, yeah, top ten. We're gonna make it a top ten <laughs> next year because next year, what? Five was hard. Five was very hard, but next year, 2022, 2022 is gonna be a year or two for heavy hitters. That's a strange. A lot of films. Okay, we're not gonna go down the list. That's a whole nother video. <laughs> oh, two, man. Yes, yes. But anyway, y'all, hit that like and that subscribe button. Let us know what y'all top five films is, and I'll see y'all later. Don't feel bad, you can do this. Have fun. Speeding. Yeah. Oh. Speeding, yeah. Sound. Mic on sound? Mm hmm. Oh, cool. <clears throat> Actually, I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I think it might be like a display thing. Like a, I think it's always just info. Info, yeah, for me. Hmm. This is that. Yeah. Hmm. Alright. It, it should be working. Should, yeah, we should because you have the, the picking thing. Alright, cool. You ready, baby? We rolling already? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we are? <laughs> one second. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. One second. I mean, we are technically rolling, right, fam? We yeah. are, for real? Yeah. yeah. But it's speeding. been easier for me. <laughs> so, you are already speeding, yeah. Yeah, that's how I do it. <laughs> oh, All right. Rap. Hold on. Alright, cool. <laughs> we good? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, for my number five, I guess we're just going to go from five all the way up to wait, number wait, one. Wait, you didn't even say, did you even say we were in the top five? Did I say, I know I said it, didn't I say them? No. no. I didn't say our top five I don't movies. Think you said you was a great year for films. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I remember. Fine, cut that, that one more time. <laughs> yeah. Speed? Uh, and speed. Oh, hold on. And speed. We're good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do in this video here is we're going to talk about our top five movies of the year 2021 and it's been an interesting year and that's where I talk about that. <laughs> it's been an interesting year. I'm going to cut that in, oh, put that okay. in there. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I was supposed to put that in there. Alright, so number five, I'm going to start, actually yeah, I'm just going to, we're going to go from number five all the way to our number one. Is that alright? That's fine. Alright, so number five, I'll let you go ahead and start the party, bro. Nah, I don't think so. Why? <laughs> you you supposed to start the party. Oh my about God. <laughs> Sam! Don't throw that thing. <laughs> Cut this freaking part. <laughs> Sweet. I'ma let No Way Home be my honorable mention since that one is like oh, up there. Wow. Everybody like everybody's putting that on their top. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Alright, my We're on three, right? Yeah, yeah for, for me now, hundred. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Weird. <coughs> yeah. All right. So, what's your number three, bro? <sighs> My number three is Nightmare Alley by Guillermo del Toro. Okay. <laughs> Wait a <laughs> second. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, do -do. You can have a do. Uh, <clears throat> first Break, of all, mad respect for Guillermo del Toro. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of work he puts in, even before a single frame is shot, it's just amazing, and it shows in this movie. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> damn. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm 
mean, we could just keep going, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> you could have kept going. No, you cut that? No. Oh, no? No, no, you no, already no. hurt hearing yourself already. <laughs> no, did you cut him? No. No, okay. You <coughs> could have cut that. No, no, it's fine. <coughs> okay. All right. All right. <coughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> ah, you need some water. Cut that, Sam. Cut no, 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 no. Cut it. Oh, okay, okay. Cut it. No, you ain't finna just. <laughs>